All Home DIY Dad here today. I'm gonna to show you how I made doors for my shed. I previously had a roll-up spring-loaded door that the shaft snapped on. Um, I think something went wrong with the ball bearing and it snapped. It was holding on only by one side of the shaft. So I kind of had a quick project here with materials I had laying around and some new materials. So I'll walk through how I made these French style uh, shed doors. Because I already had a door that was installed on the shed, this is all done after the shed is all finished. It wasn't you know, done while the shed was being made. Makes it a little more difficult to frame out and get everything to size. Um, the opening for it wasn't exactly square. So um, some difficulties with it, but overall went pretty well and I'll show you how I did it. Let's do a rundown of the tools you're gonna need for this project. Um, it is involving cutting wood, um, basically cutting some paneling. So you do need some, some decent tools for this one. Um, I used a miter saw. I also used a handheld skill saw with a Craig track system. You don't need that. If you're decent with a skill saw, you can do it by hand without using the track system. I also need to have drills, a couple of the finish work. Um, I needed to use an oscillating tool. Obviously gonna need tape measure, uh, pencil, some clamps um, for attaching the wood to the paneling. Uh, gonna need a, a square as well to make sure things are squared up when you're attaching everything. Obviously sanding, everybody's favorite for when you're sanding before you're doing your painting. Gonna need painting materials, the paint, outdoor paint that you want and the colors that you want. You're also gonna need to have um, paint brushes or rollers, however your preferred way of painting is. If you have a spray, um, a sprayer for painting, you can use that as well. Um, as far as materials, I used the LP Smart Siding um, panels. They come in four by eight, basically the size of a uh, plywood. It's not quite the same match to my shed, but my shed was made prior to this product coming out, I assume. And it matches pretty close. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. I also took um, a sample of the paint color to Sherwin-Williams and had them try to do a color match. It came out pretty close. It's a little bit darker. Um, than the original, but eventually I'm going to be painting and touching up um, all the spots anyways. So you're going to need outdoor paint, uh, whatever trim color you want, and then the base material. Um, and then as far as framing, I had, I had a lot of treated 2x4 and 2x6 lumber laying around from other projects that I did. And I didn't really want to spend additional money on buying new materials. While this isn't the absolute best material to use for doing the doors. It's pretty heavy. Obviously treated material is prone to warping and shrinking and expanding quite a bit, but mine have been laying around all summer. So the shrinking and drying out process has been done and I didn't want to spend more money. So this works just fine. I used two by fours for the sides and the middle framing and then the bottom and the top I used two by six. And that's all pressure treated, ground treated lumber. I wanted to kind of use that as well because this is sitting right on the ground and we get a lot of snow in the winter. So having it sit against that, I'm not worried about that wood rotting out and having to redo the door in a couple years. And then also you're gonna need hardware. So I did black matching hardware. This is a shed door latch I got off Amazon. I'll post a link uh, in the description of the video for all this, uh, works pretty well. And then I bought at Home Depot six matching hinges that have a pretty good weight rating because I know this treated stuff is pretty heavy. Uh, I also used this GRK fasteners. I really have enjoyed working with these fasteners in the past and they're technically cabinet screws but they're treated for outdoor use and they're treated lumber approved and I really like them because they have a really high um, weight rating in terms of snapping power. They hold strong, they go in really easy. Um, overall, really nice product. So I've used quite a bit of these. I used one and a half inch, um, eight by one and a half inch for this project. I used almost exactly a hundred of them um, because I used one and a half material screwing in from the back side of this, like I'll show you, worked really well with these screws. Other stuff you're gonna wanna think about, um, blades for your saws. Um, you're doing finish work, but it's all gonna be painted and sanded. You don't need the best blades. You don't need the highest quality equipment to do this one, um, but you're gonna to wanna to need to have some good drills. Also gonna want some good bits. 
um, for your drill. I like to pre-drill a lot of my stuff. I hate wasting time building, cutting everything, and using a, a screw and having it split the wood. The treated lumber really doesn't split easy, um, but you never know where you're gonna have to put these screws close to the edges, on the ends, all of that. I don't like it when I gotta redo something, especially after painting um, and having it split. A couple other pieces of material you're gonna wanna plan for is the kind of back edge of the door for the side that you want the other ones to swing to. So the other side swings onto this one, which is latch closed. And I wanted to use some decent material here to help that weather block in that crack. So I had some uh, one, by, one by four material that I use for a different project that's treated. Um, doesn't need to be heavy duty or anything. It's just for the back side of this. So you're gonna wanna plan for that. And then also these latches. Um, these work really nice for this side to latch tight on the inside of the framing so that you have something for the other door to latch onto to keep it from swinging. And then you don't have to put in framing on the bottom or the top that would hinder you from pulling things in and out or having things hanging down from the opening and having big things you need to put in the shed. Um, this works really well to keep her closed and this one then fastens to that to make it nice and tight. So these latches I also got at Amazon. I'll post a link in the description. Um, they're stainless, outdoor rated, have a good heavy duty spring on them and pop into place on the top and the bottom. It's one down here as well. Just the overall construction, you can see the back of the door is the LP Smart Side. And they're both stripped down for the sizing. And one thing to note when you're thinking about all this, the edges of these, the paneling, does not show from the outside. The framing covers it up. So you don't need to make to worry so much about having perfect cuts or the best um, product or tools to cut it. You just need to make sure it's a little smaller uh, than the framing is for the outside because the real framing and structure is going to be these two by fours or if you want to use one by four material or one by six material, you can do that as well. And that's going to provide the rigidity and it covers up that edge. So you really don't have to worry too much about having a perfect edge as long as it is a little smaller than the framing and obviously that fits inside of your dimensions that you want. So that's the back side and I actually use those GRK screws to fasten into the framing uh, material so that you don't see any fasteners from the outside. It's a better paint finish material. You don't have to worry about paint chipping as much and weather penetration. So I have to redo it. And then handle wise, this shed door handle works really nice. As you can see, this closes then in this little gap behind here and locks as well. So you open and close it, it latches here nice and tight against this door that's fastened in. Pretty simple design, it's not rocket science. Um, one thing additional that I did that I'll show you as well is I um, used exterior caulking and caulked all the edges of the material helps water penetration um, it's all treated it's not a huge deal if you don't want to do that and these panels have these gaps in here so water will end up running down um, and out but i also didn't necessarily want that because i don't want it sitting against the bottom of the shed floor and pooling there and causing any moisture issues so i wanted to kind of seal everything up um, protect any of that moisture penetration. Let's get started. First things first is measuring. Uh, probably one of the most important steps here. And you're going to want to measure the top and the bottom and each side. Because not every opening is going to be square. Mine definitely wasn't square. It wasn't awful, but it did make it a little bit of a challenge. So you're going to want to measure top and bottom. Make sure you use the smaller measurement when deciding your cuts left and right and again smaller measurement when deciding your cuts and when you get these final measurements you're going to want to leave yourself a decent amount of space what i mean by that is when you put hinges on and you put the doors in you can't just have it fit exactly tight to the 16th because it's never going to work so you have a gap between the doors in the middle you have a gap on each side right and left and obviously top and bottom so i would leave a half an inch to five eighths inch total 
um, on your cuts between left and right, top and bottom. Left and right probably needs a little bit more than the top and the bottom because you do have that middle gap. But I would leave half inch for top and bottom and five eighths for left and right. All right, it's time to get the cuts done. Got my pen and paper here showing my diagram and kind of writing out all the cuts that I need to do so I don't mess them up. And the cliche is a cliche for a reason. I almost caught myself making a mess up on one of the cuts. Measured again, had the measurement wrong the first time, so it saved me from using a whole nother 16 foot two by four. I decided to make a design for the doors where the top and the bottom are solid two by six. And I wanted those attached to the hinges on the top and the bottom to give it a little bit more um, integrity structurally. I didn't want the 2x4 on the side to go all the way from the top and the bottom and then have the hinge attached partly to that and then partly to the 2x6. I just wanted it solely on the 2x6. I felt that would be a little bit stronger. Pretty happy with the end result. So I would say I would recommend that um, if you're looking to design these doors. I have seen it done both ways. It seems to work both ways. I think the appearance of the door, if it sits on the outside of the framing, is better to do it the opposite and have the 2x4 all the way from the top and the bottom because then you don't have an edge that is exposed when you're looking at it. But most shed doors are not exposed on the edges. They are only exposed at the front, which means having that that edge on the side exposed for viewing it a moot point because it doesn't matter. So I think this is a stronger way to do it. The middle hinge does obviously still support it and there is no way to you know do that as one solid board uh, but the tops and the bottom work really well. So I did use a 2x4 for the middle uh, framing section and I also used a 2x4 for the structural angled piece that goes from the um, hinge area on the bottom up angled up towards the middle on the outside of each door and that is not just for looks i know that's kind of a standard look of having a, a frame door a shed door but it actually does add some structural integrity the weight of the door sagging can get, take that load into that two by four and take it all the way over to the side frame closest to the hinge so it adds some structural rigidity to the to the whole door all I'm doing here is now taking my cuts, putting them up on one of the um, paneling pieces. I actually have both pieces of panel stacked here um, to do the cuts and make it easy. Um, what I want to do is lay it out and get the framing kind of set in so that you can get an exact measurement of what you need to do for cutting the panels. Um, these aren't cheap panels. Um, having only two of them, obviously, it's not that expensive to do, but you don't want to mess it up and, and waste another, you know, $40. Um, so I'm setting these up and I'm setting the framing over the edges by maybe about an eighth of an inch on each um, piece of framing so that when you make the cut, it's going to be set a little bit off the edge of the framing um, because you don't want to make these cuts, put the framing in and then have an overlap because that's going to hit the edges you know of your of your shed opening so i marked all my spots um, on the horizontal and vertical pieces with laying out the framing and then we can get set to cut use my long level to make a nice straight edge here from for the kind of side to side cut that i need to make obviously can't use it for the long one um, it gives me a nice guide when i'm going to make this cut and then when I get the mark done on the top board, the top panel, I'm going to actually go around, make sure all the edges are matching for both panels, top and bottom, because I have them stacked. And I'm going to clamp them down um, in a few places so that when I make this cut, they don't move. And then I get a kind of a two for one cut. And I know that they're the exact same size. All right, I'm going to use my skill saw on this. I'm not using any guides or anything. I decided against using my uh, little track system that I have from Craig, just because these cuts don't have to be perfect. Um, if this was building cabinetry, something like that, obviously I still would. Um, but this, I don't need to, as long as I'm staying pretty close to that line. Um, it's really not going to matter one way or the other if you miss an eighth or a quarter inch even. 
Now for the long cut, um, the way that my doors ended up measuring out is they're pretty much just under four feet. I think 47 inches was what my cut needed to be. So I really didn't have to cut off much. It actually pretty much just cuts off that little overlapping lip on these um, panels. The panels are meant to be siding, so they have the little lips that overlap each other. So I pretty much just had to cut that part off. And I did end up using my Craig guide for this because the way that the skill saw would sit on the panel, I mean, it would really only be overlapping it um, by a little bit unless I turn the whole panel around um, to make the cut the opposite direction. But this makes a nice straight edge. You use the actual edge of the board to make the cut and um, made pretty quick work of it. Now that I've got my panels cut, um, take one of them off and now I'm laying out the framing for one of the doors and I'm going to do the actual support angled piece here and get the cuts fine tuned. I just did rough cuts when I did the original one because until you have it all measured out and set up, this is it's kind of a pointless to get this one cut out. So getting this one cut with the angles the way that I need it um, with the miter saw so I can get ready to paint everything. I'm going to spare you the part where I spent hours sanding all of these 2x4 and 2x6s. My 2x6s were sitting out for a long time and had a lot of debris on them, so I had to sand them off um, pretty good. Uh, sanding is my least favorite part of doing these projects, so I'll spare you from watching me do it. And then we get into the painting. Um, I did use Sherwin-Williams um, primer and paint for all of this. There's a store pretty close to my house and I took a sample of my shed color, uh, kind of a grayish color to them to, to match it. So I decided to use their paint. I used um, not the top of the line outdoor, but middle of the road stuff. Um, they said it was pretty easy to apply. I'm not all that worried about it with being shed doors. It's not like it's my house, um, but I did do a primer coat on all of this because it is treated lumber. Um, soaks up quite a bit here because it's been drying for quite a long time. So I did one coat of primer and then I did three coats of paint. I did three coats on the framing and also three coats on the paneling. The paneling doesn't need a primer because it already has a primer on it um, from the factory, which is nice. Saves you an extra step. So I just did three coats of the color matched paint in gray for the panels. And other projects I've done for painting that are a little bit more intricate and finished work for interior. I, I do use an airless sprayer that I have, a handheld one. But for this project, it would require a lot of setup and you know have to worry about overspray. And I, I had some inclement weather that I knew was coming in and a lot of rain. I just used a paintbrush and did all of it by hand. It took a little bit more time, but it was overall easier with the way that I obviously can't have a professional um, paint setup. You probably could get away with using a roller on a lot of this as well. It's hard on the two by fours and two by sixes maybe, but for the panels, you probably could have probably could have done a roller. With that being said, I did really like the Sherwin Williams paint. It was easy to apply. Didn't have to worry too much about um, streaks or running because it is a pretty thick paint, um, dries pretty quick. So I overall really liked it. Now for my favorite part of doing projects, get a little bit of progress going and it seems like you're making some headway here by actually getting everything mocked up and and fastening the panel to the framing. So how I did this is I used um, some clamps that I had, um, kind of any clamps will work, and I used some sanding pads um, for my rotary sander to put down on the top of the paint finish so that you're not scuffing the paint. Back side doesn't matter, it's just on the panel, but the top side does. So I put the soft side down on those for every time I use this so I didn't worry about scuffing anything and it worked out really well. Probably could use a towel or something like that as well. So what I did is I, I started kind of with board by board, fastening down each side. And from the underside, I put in those GRK one and a half inch um, screws that are rated for treated lumber. I did use a pilot drill bit um, for each one. Probably was overkill. These screws are really nice. They don't really cause splitting in the wood. But I didn't know exactly where all of my drill points were going to be. And I did not want to get an edge and split something. 
So I did end up doing that. It took a little extra time. Uh, it is what it is. You probably could skip that step and you'd be just fine. So I went around, did all of the outside framing before I decided to do the middle slots because those fit perfectly you know, between all of the outside framing and I didn't want to put that in and then have it be bold or have to worry about cutting that at that time. So I did the outside. I did have some trouble with one of the two by fours was a little bit warped, um, which, you know, treated lumber does that. I tried to pick some good stuff out of the stock that I had laying around. Um, but this is kind of all I had. So I knew I would have to kind of bow that one out a little bit uh, when I fastened it down. Overall, um, it worked out pretty well and I got it pretty straight. I did that by putting screws into the side of the framing in a couple spots and using a crowbar to pull it out towards the edging so that it get its slight overlap over that panel and then screwing in from the bottom to keep it where it needed to be. Um, I would recommend if you do have a piece that's warped to do it where it's warped in to the inside of the paneling versus the outside because squeezing that board then back across is going to be harder than pulling it out. I just then dabbed those spots with some wood glue and touched them up later with some paint. All right, now it's time to put the uh, middle 2x4s in. Now that the framing's all attached to each panel, I just kind of found the middle exactly, measured that out, um, put some painter's tape in to mark the mark so I could get them exactly in the middle, trim them down, put them in, and then did the same thing for those angled support pieces. Um, kind of mocked them up where I needed to, trimmed off the ends, the angle cuts. And then one tip I have for screwing these in from the back, because it is a little bit difficult to make sure you get them in the right spot and in a straight line, is I used some uh, painter's tape and ran it from one edge all the way to the other edge. So I had a good straight line where I know I could put my screws and just did kind of two screws on each side of that tape um, in a few spots all the way under to fasten them in. Did the same thing for the angled pieces. This is the optional piece of the project that you could incorporate if you want to, uh, caulking all the edges to get a nice tight seal. I decided to do it, um, I kind of do everything overkill, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Uh, it's a nice step. I also like caulking the edges where all the boards meet. It makes a nice um, nice line there. You don't see those dark edges in, in the finished product. One tip I have, if, if you are going to do this and you're not very experienced with caulking like I am, I'm haven't done this very often and every time I seem to do caulk work I mess up or have messes everywhere and just schmears. I just recommend taping it. I tried not taping it, turned out awful. Um, the way that these panels are they have a lot of edges in them because they're meant to look like wood grain and the caulk just kind of spreads all over into those edges. Doing it with tape is much easier so if you can use tape Take the extra time, tape it out, it'll turn out a lot better in the end. Plus, it's pretty satisfying to put that tape down, do the caulking, and you get a really nice straight edge um, that turns out to be a really nice finish for your product. All right, let's get these doors mounted. Uh, this is fairly difficult. Like I said, my opening isn't perfectly square. It wasn't awful, but it still makes it hard. You get a shim. The, the bottom so that the bottom doesn't touch you know and rub when you're closing it and then you have to shim the side of where the hinges are to make sure that you get it square in the opening as best you can. You really just got to get it so it's not rubbing on the top and the bottom um, when it's opening and not leaving just an enormous gap somewhere obviously um, but it did take a little time to get these doors shimmed uh, correctly get them to hold in place so that you can get that top hinge in and at least hold it while you do the rest of them. I did leave my other door in and because it was broken but still semi-functional keeping the weather out because I didn't know how this would go to get these mounted. If I messed up a measurement or did something wrong in cutting, um, I may have to trim this down. Uh, get the table saw out, trim them down. Um, luckily I didn't have to do that. Got them both up mounted. I did find it uh, beneficial to have a, a 
pencil or something to mark the holes to do the pilots. I uh, definitely did not want to put screws in and cause any cracking or splitting in the framing because that means you're putting up all new trim boards and frame boards around the outside of the opening of the shed. So I did um, use pilot holes before I put the screws in. One additional step I did take is I put in some good structural um, GRK screws around where the hinges are mounted into my frame boards. The boards on the outside of the shed, because this is retrofit, are just trim boards. Um, so I made sure I got some good screws to go into the framing of the actual shed so that they were mounted nice and weren't going anywhere. Now we can put the hardware in for the actual door latch. Um, this is a nice shed door latch. It locks on the outside with a key, goes through with a hole, and then you put the actual moving piece on the back side. And what that does is when you turn the handle, it locks against the other door. I decided my left door was going to be the one that I would um, latch into the framing of the shed, and I would open the right door first. So I put it on the right door, it turns, latches behind the left door. Now we can get the left door fastened in with the spring bolts. Um, these are really nice. I got them on Amazon. They're stainless. So what I did is kind of positioned them so that I knew that when they were in the open position, they weren't going to hit anything when they were swinging open and closed. Mark the spot where the actual bolt was going to contact the wood on the top. Marked where the mounting position would be on the panel and drilled the hole through the top, attached it to the panel, and did the same thing on the top and the bottom so that it was secured nicely in both spots. And then the other door can swing and stop and hit this one, which is held solidly in place. Next step is to get the um, piece that goes on the back of the uh, door that is actually latched. And this is what causes the other door, which is the right door for mine, to make contact with that one and stop it so that you can latch it. Um, this is a nice feature because you don't have to put in any blocking on the top or the bottom of the framing of the shed that hinders you know, pulling things in and out of the shed when you need to. This causes a nice stable location for the other door to stop onto and then latch up. Last step is to cut a piece out of that uh, board so that you can actually get your handle to fasten onto the back of the latch door. So just mark that out, use an oscillating tool, cut the front, cut from the back, got that thing out quick. Now you can sit back and admire your work. Hope you're as happy with your project as I was, and I hope this helped you with your project. And if it did, please hit the subscribe button and leave any questions in the comments below.